My name is India and I am from Te Arafatu, um, an indigenous youth delegation from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, so I come from a nation called Ngāti Kahungunu Kihiratonga. Um, this is my iwi or my tribe, um, one of many Māori iwi in New Zealand. Yeah. Okay, my name is Johnson Serda. I am from Ecuador. I am a Quechua person. I work with the Dedicated Grant Mechanism for Indigenous Peoples, uh, which is a program in Conservation International. Yeah, I see the role as Indigenous people being really important because we're on the front lines of climate change. So if climate action is done well for us, then everyone will be looked after. Um, and we also have unique understandings of our environment after living in it for thousands of years sustainably. Um, and that means that we have unique knowledge about how to manage our resources well in a way that doesn't create imbalance in our ecosystems um, and need to utilize fossil fuels as well. Oh, well, the platform it's, it's part of the request of indigenous peoples. They have made several years ago in 92, saying that we want to contribute with our knowledge. So after you know, several years, we have this great opportunity to have this platform in order to exchange the knowledge and provide information from communities in order to, uh, you know, work in adaptation and mitigation. And that will help the governments to increase their ambitions. Can you give an example? Well, uh, for instance, in the communities, we have knowledge to manage the forests, and we don't uh, basically uh, work in deforestation, we do some uh, small agriculture, we do some activities in the forest and we protect the forest, that's part of the, let's say, mitigation uh, contribution, but also uh, we have some practices in the highlands, practices adapting some plants into uh, different uh, ecosystems, so that helps for people to adapt and that kind of knowledge can support the national programs on adaptation. So what we intend to happen with the platform is for it to create a space where we can meet as Indigenous peoples and collaborate and share our knowledge together. It's also an avenue through which we can share our knowledge with parties and local government to take greater action on climate change. And ultimately it's an opportunity for us to inform the decision making process here in the UN officially, um, which designates an official space for Indigenous peoples to engage with parties on taking climate action, which has never happened before. Well, since Paris, okay. Uh, in, uh, when they were negotiating the Paris Agreement, there was a proposal to include um, Indigenous peoples to, like, com commit Indigenous peoples to reduce emissions. And there was a a huge concern because we are not responsible of the emissions so how why we should be you know committing ourselves to reduce the emissions and after that this proposal came up saying that what we need is a platform where we can exchange our knowledge and contribute somehow to the governments or to the countries in order to reduce the emission or increase their ambition so that's how the platform came or show up yeah so Indigenous peoples and indigenous rights are mentioned multiple times in the agreement, but the important paragraph is paragraph 135, um, which created an indigenous peoples and local communities platform um, within the UNFCCC. Um, what we then saw in Morocco was a willingness um, by the presidency to operationalize this. So, to kick the process off the ground um, after it had been created in the Paris Agreement. Um, and then this year was all about getting feedback on what it should look like and what the key stepping stones are to making the platform. So what is it that we need to do to do the platform, basically, yeah. We have had some informal conversations with governments and saying that what we want to do, how we want to contribute, and also in a formal exchange. We had just one formal uh, dialogue with the governments, official dialogue, and we clearly said that what we want there. We want to contribute, but we want the respect 
of our knowledge, our, of our rights. We want also the full and effective participation in the process, and we want to be there. Sometimes uh, uh, we say that we want to have a full participation at the same level as governments in order to contribute. So that was the process. Now we are here in, in, in Bonn working in, in order to implement the platform. Well, negotiations um, within the small subster or group or the subsidiary body involved um, started back Monday last week. So we're in day eight now of these negotiations. Um, what we see is that there are two very clear groups within the parties who are saying how they want the next steps to take place. Um, and they're very different and opposing views. Um, and it's definitely being driven by domestic political agenda um, and perspectives from those parties. Um, they're also slowing down because ultimately they don't know quite how they want it to look and they're also not listening to us as indigenous peoples when we say how we want it to look. So they ask us what we want and we tell them and then they get confused and they stop listening to us and get caught up in their political genders and it goes around and around in a circle. We are on equal footing with the states and parties and therefore we deserve the same amount of decision making power and the same amount of space given. Over the last three years we have been negotiating this platform, engaging in good faith with the parties to make sure that this indigenous platform for us to share our knowledge and to accelerate climate action actually gets off the ground. And over the last 10 days, we have seen them talk and talk and talk. And talk can be productive, but this time it has not been. It has gone around and around in circles. So we're in a place now where the decision text has not been finalized and the decision is now possibly going to be delayed until the next round of climate talks. So, at this moment there is uh, some concerns because uh, the governments, they are not uh, uh, putting together their ideas in order to implement this platform and if they don't decide it could take you know more time and we have concerns that maybe that's going to be delayed and going to be it's going to be like i don't know more time and we don't want to spend our time so we want really uh, implement the, the platform as soon as possible in order to see how our best practices can contribute to the to increase the ambition the uh, informally, the local communities and indigenous peoples platform, and I will be presenting it to the plenary tomorrow for formal adoption. Enter the later, like um, 11 p.m. more or less, the document was cleaned up finally. In the beginning it was 24 points and then now the final document has almost 12, if I, I am correct. So most of the proposals as indigenous people, they were inserted. I mean, there are the elements. Uh, what is important for us as indigenous people are in the document. So finally, the op the opera operalization is there. So yesterday at night, they get an agreement. So the document is presented to the substa. We got, that is the procedure. So the substa co-chair, he was there. He received, and that has to bring to the president of COP uh, to finish this day. Maybe some ministers in the high level segment, they will like to review, they will like to read it, but I don't think that they will change or they will, maybe they will suggest, because from here right now, that elements that we as indigenous people, the most important thing is that if we can remind or remember is that 
they really mention or footnote the, about the emphasize about the UNRIP declaration on indigenous people rights. So that is insight, precisely as a principle. So from that we need to connect and this process of, of operationalization, the structure, we need to connect how is going to be the funding, how we can also to make this work, right? So we as indigenous people, we did so this is a victory because this, uh, my feeling is this is a long uh, walk, of course, uh, it's hard uh, because between us we need to reach people different regions, issues we need to get together. But in this process and the context, uh, what my feeling is that in this we have a victory, we win. <laughs> Oh, yeah.